Our first lesson this morning on the second Sunday after Pentecost comes from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write these words, for they are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, and the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes. Though it is tested by fire, may it be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel this morning is taken from St. John in the fifth chapter. Jesus is speaking. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. But most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him whom I sent, he has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Invite the, you can be seated, invite the children up for a children's message. Okay, good morning. Good morning. What do I have here? A fork. What do you do with a fork? Okay, you eat your dinner, right? So you eat your food with your fork. And then after your plate's all cleaned up, sometimes you have something else come after dinner. What's that? Dessert. So sometimes after you've finished eating, you still have to hang on to your fork because you know the good stuff is coming next. That's the dessert, right? One day, a lady said to her pastor, I want to be buried with a fork. And the pastor said, why do you want to be buried with a fork? Because she said, just like after dinner, if I hold on to my fork, I know that the best stuff is still coming. And so what she was saying was she knew that when she went to heaven, that was going to be the best stuff. 
right, of all of God's blessings. So whenever you think of a fork, you can remember that God has even greater blessings for us up in heaven than we have here on earth, right? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that because of Jesus, we have great blessings to come. Amen. All right. I've got either Smarties or lollipops. Okay. Could have given them a fork, right? But a fork and a lollipop don't work. Please rise for the Apostles' Creed. You know, can she tell the different flavors by the color of the wrapper? No. I, well, <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering what took her so long to pick, you know. <laughs> the other kids are reading the wrappers, you know, to see what they got inside. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She could have just been polite. That's nice. Join with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Just uh, a reminder that at 1.30 today, we are celebrating Greg Vogelsmeyer's retirement from many, many years of teaching ministry. It's, uh, and so he used to teach here at St. John's. He went on and continued to teach many years in the public school as well. So please come and just be with us this afternoon for a little while from 1.30 to 3.30 um, to celebrate Greg's uh, retirement. I also wanted to mention one of our prayers this morning. Uh, Whitney Hall, it's listed on your announcement sheet, is Anita Hoisington's granddaughter. Um, she was in a very, very severe car accident. Um, single person, just her, uh, but um, just very severe. She's been in ICU. They've already performed two or three different surgeries, her, her neck, her hip, and... Uh, just really beat up from, from that surgery. She, um, we are fortunate, uh, she was very fortunate and answered a prayer that they were able to stop the bleeding in her liver because um, she was having a lot of bleeding in her liver after the accident as well. So please pray for Whitney. Uh, that's Anita Hoisington's granddaughter. Let's uh, pray and ask God to bless our, our time in the Word. <clears throat> Father, we... Uh, we want to lift up in prayer Whitney. We pray, Lord, that you would give wisdom and skill to the doctors and nurses and all who are tasked with being a part of your healing grace in her life. And we pray that you would make those efforts effective, that you would bring healing and restoration to her. Give her the strength and the comfort and the patience and the faith that she needs for the long days ahead. We pray also for her family and loved ones uh, that you would um, reassure their hearts uh, as they pray and as they minister their love to Whitney in the days and weeks ahead. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our text uh, in John 5, Jesus says that those who believe in him, whoever believes in me, he says, has eternal life. He uses the present tense, has eternal life. That in some sense, right now, we have eternal life as our possession. 
We may not have it fully yet, but no one can take it away from us because it's a gift to God to us in Jesus Christ. Of course, if you've been with us the last six or seven weeks, we've been answering the question, what do you have when you have Jesus? To have Jesus is to have God's love and His peace and His grace. And to have Jesus means our desire to love Him back and to live in service to Him. So let's go on this morning with blessing number eight. What do you have when you have Jesus? When you have Jesus, praise the Lord, when you have Jesus, number eight is the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. For those who have Jesus, there is joy and glory beyond the grave and beyond this life because Christ is risen. This isn't indeed. Hallelujah. And Jesus rose, the Scripture says, as the first fruit of victory over death. And so all who have Jesus will have the victory as well. I'm really, really thankful for the seven blessings that we've already covered, just glorious blessings that we've been rejoicing in Jesus, but I am so thankful for this one, for number eight. Because we're not only creatures of this earth, having Jesus not only provides us the best life in this world, having Jesus provides us not only with a life of peace and joy and hope and meaning, but having Jesus, there's far more than that. Because Having Jesus means the best is yet to come. In our second lesson, Peter writes that God has given us a living hope, a hope that lives inside of us, a living hope, he says, through the resurrection of the dead to an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. And the Word of God is true. And Peter continues, in this inheritance waiting for you, he says, you greatly rejoice, even though for a while in this life you face trials. Peter says, life is filled with trials, but in the midst of those trials, we can still rejoice greatly. Why? Because when you have Jesus, the best is yet to come. When you have Jesus, the Bible says, you have a glorious inheritance reserved for you in heaven. A few weeks ago, we rejoiced that having Jesus, we are a child of God. And now, as God's children, Peter says we have a glorious inheritance that awaits us. But we have not yet received this wonderful inheritance from God. An illustration. A pastor in a large church hired a secretary, and one day his friend stopped by, and he said, Pastor, do you know who your secretary is? And the pastor said, of course I know who my secretary is. It's it's Natalie Cole. The friend said, do you know who Natalie Cole is? The pastor said, well, she's a very nice young lady. She shows up on time, and she works hard, and I pay her well, $2 an hour. That's church work, you know. And the friend said, Well, that's Nat King Cole's daughter. The pastor said, are you kidding? So after the friend left, the pastor called the young woman into his office, and he said, come in, Natalie, have a seat. Are you Nat King Cole's daughter? She says, yes. He said, well, why didn't you tell me? She said, I didn't know if it was required. I just wanted the job. The pastor said, now, Natalie, I don't want to get into your business, but I know your daddy was well off, and you've been very faithful, and I don't pay you very much. She said, well, my daddy left me quite a bit, but I haven't come into it yet. I'm the daughter of Nat King Cole, but I haven't come into all my inheritance yet because I have to be 21 years old. But it's there waiting for me, but I just haven't come into it yet. We are children of God, and we are heirs of the heavenly kingdom, but right now some of us are Our mothers, some of us are changing diapers, some of us are cooking meals, some of us are secretaries, some of us are auto mechanics, some of us are professionals, some of us clean houses, some are doctors or nurses, some drive trucks, and many teach kids, and we don't look like we are heirs of any great tremendous fortune. 
Some of us have lives with pain and tears. Some of us struggle to keep it all together, and we don't look like we are children of wealth, but we just haven't come into it yet. For every single one of us, no matter what we have or don't have in this life, for every one of us who has Jesus, the best is yet to come. Amen? For those who have Jesus, the message of Easter, the message of the empty tomb, is that death is not the final chapter. For those who have Jesus, we have a blessed right now, but we're going to have an even more glorious later. Those who have Jesus have been promised a holy golden city and a new heavens and a new earth. Those who have Jesus have been promised a new and glorious eternal body free from sickness and pain. Those who have Jesus have been promised they will never grow old again. Those who have Jesus have been promised that we never say goodbye to our loved ones. We only say, I'll see you again in glory. Those who have Jesus have been promised a new eternal life. And there we will never get tired, never shed a tear, never have pain, never have any sorrow, because for those of us who have Jesus, the best is yet to come. Amen? Right now we have a home, but it's not the best. Right now we have a church, but it's not the best. Right now we have a family, but it's not the best. And right now we have a life, but it's still not the best. And of all the best things that is yet to come, the best thing will be in the presence of Jesus Himself. This world, this life has nothing to offer compared with being in the very presence of the risen Savior in the joy and glory of heaven. Not just to kneel with the angels, not just to see our loved ones who have gone, not just to drink from the fountain under the great white throne, not just for the crown that He giveth am I trying to run this race. All I want up in heaven is just to behold Jesus' face. Not just to join in the choir, to sing with those who are blessed, and bathe my soul that is weary in a sea of heavenly rest. But I'll look for the one who has saved me from death and sin and disgrace. It will be my greatest joy in heaven when I get to behold His face just to behold His face. Mother, father, sister, brother, and all who have run the race, what a joy will be ours forever when we together behold the Lord's face. Turn to your neighbor. Everybody pick a neighbor. All right. Friend, I have Jesus, and the best is yet to come. Amen. There was a young lady in a large Baptist church who thought she had fallen in love with a Jehovah's Witness, so she said to the young man, I can't get serious with you until after you go to see my pastor. So the young man went to see the pastor, kind of with an attitude that he was going to win him over to all of his ideas, because you know they're very, very well trained um, in their witnessing. So this young fellow came into the pastor's office like a machine gun, just firing all of his ammunition, one right after the other. And the pastor just sat there patiently, verse after verse, point after point, and the pastor watched the time. So when the young man ran out of steam, the pastor said, all right, I want equal time. I listened to you for 17 minutes, now I want equal time. Finally, the young man said after the pastor spoke, Pastor, all this stuff you're saying about you're certain you're already saved and you're certain that you're a child of God and you're certain that you're going to heaven makes no sense because St. Paul says we have to run the race. And only at the end of the race, then we're put on a scale and we're weighed. And if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, you'll get into heaven. And if your bad deeds outweigh your good deeds, you'll go to hell. Now, if it comes down to a scale in heaven, if it comes down to weighing in, some of us are in big trouble. Amen? So the young man asked the pastor, he said, Pastor, how do you know you have heaven when you're still in the process of running the race? Well, this was many years ago, so the pastor replied, 
Young man, did you see that World Series game the other day? Did you see that game? And the young man replied, yes. And the pastor said, well, do you remember when Reggie Jackson hit that long, long home run? He put it way over the fence, out into the bleachers, and the young man said yes. The pastor said, was it a home run? The young man said yes. The pastor asked, well, could anybody put him out? The young man said no. The pastor said, well, then why did he run the bases? It was over the fence. It was a home run. But still he had to touch first and second and third before he could go home. But he wasn't in any danger along the way because nobody was going to throw him out from the bleachers. And the young man said, Pastor, what are you trying to say? And the pastor replied, well, the manager called for a substitute, and Jesus stood up to the plate as our pinch hitter. And on the cross, Jesus hit it over the fence. And our sins are gone, gone, gone. They're out of here. So now I do possess eternal life. It's mine, but I still got to touch first, and I still got to touch second, and I still got to touch third, and I've got to run the bases, but I'm in no danger all the way. I know I will make it home safe because I have Jesus. And one day I will cross the plate, and then the celebration will really begin, and there's going to be a bunch of high-fiving amongst all the saints, and there'll be some popping of celestial champagne, and there'll be a big trophy ceremony, and then we'll get all those We Are the Champion t-shirts, and the heavenly reporter angel will stick a microphone in my face and say, how does it feel to finally, finally have made it? And I'll reply, I just want to thank my Lord Jesus Christ because he's the real MVP, and he's the one who won the game. But you and I are still running the race, and that's not always easy, but we don't have to be afraid that we're not going to make it home, because when the game of life is over, only then is it celebration time. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank You for the gospel message that we are safe and secure in our eternal salvation because of Your gift to us in Jesus, not because we're such wonderful Christians or people, not because we're any better than than those who have not yet come to faith in Christ, but only because You have graced us, graced us with amazing grace and with an unfailing love an unfailing love for us that guarantees that we will join you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. This time, please um, sign your attendance pads, and we will collect our offerings and gifts unto the Lord. Thank you very much.